Hello and welcome to the 110th episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. So damn paranormal. My name is not Jason Knight, uh, as you can tell. My Wait, name is, it's not? No, it's not today. Wow. Uh, my name is Oscar Spector, and with me today is... Lexi Raven. That's right. Um, hi, Lexi. How are you? Hi, Oscar. I'm, yeah. I'm good. Uh, as you guys can see, slash here, is that... Actually, only here. Yeah. Um, Jason is not with us today. No, he's not dead. No, he's not locked in some basement somewhere. Um, he is very sick. How sick and the specifics of that and leading up to flight plans and God knows what out there he's been up to with his uh, job and whatever. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it up to him to tell you next time on the show for the 100th, 11th episode or maybe a bonus. I don't know what we're doing between now and then. But uh, he'll tell you. And But, you know, as the Bard may have said, the show must go on. The, the show, show must go must on, Lexi. Go on. Lexi, it must go on. It must go on, Oscar. So he was, you know, you know how, guys, I mean, a lot of listeners know how Jason gets nervous-wise, um, anxiety-wise. So, like, I make fun of him on the show all the time about it. And don't get me wrong, I'm not immune to that either. I'm kind of hoping it goes well today. I also have a little bit of anxiety about it. But uh, I am spearheading this entire thing. Based on nothing, with no research in the background, but I it is no not not that it's based on nothing. But today's show will be based on um, an old outline that I have in in the in the bank, kind of uh, in case something like this happens. Um, a fail safe, you a might fail say. safe in a way, just just to get us off, um, you know, from from not making a show because we always have to make a show, honey. Every two weeks from now till we die, that's how it has to be. Yes, I'm aware. <clears throat> Okay. I've watched you guys do it. So yes. So many the times. Suffering. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> suffering. And then you're like, hey, let's start our own podcast. No, we can't. No, ours will be way easier than 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 the than the SOS one. Uh, but we're teasing them with a, a third a third show. No, let's not let's not tease them too much here. Um, yeah, but Lexi and I want. You know what would be something. really good? What would be really good? If like you could buy flavored ice cubes for like. Your water. You know, you can make your own flavored ice cubes by putting anything into the trays. Anything you want that's <laughs> liquid. You know that, right? Yeah, but yeah, like um, I want it made for me so I don't have to constantly like remake it. Because you know how fridges have So like, you just want someone to make it for you. Yeah, like some <laughs> flavored crushed ice. Uh, <laughs> that sounds a lot like snow cones. I think Yeah, I think you're describing it. snow cones. Yeah, everything you're saying has been done already. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, I just need a snow cone machine. In case you're wondering, I don't know how I'm going to title this episode, um... Just We're pilot gonna what? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna delve into the mind of this creature that thinks that flavored ice is a is a new thing. <laughs> uh, Wait, anyway. is it cool if I like what chew on ice on the mic? Or yeah, I... no, it's not cool. No, oh. why would you do that? It's not <laughs> as good. I'm thirsty. Well, that's a terrible idea. As you can tell, maybe by our just don't put just don't crush it on the mic. You know, you can vape outside the mic because we're using different mics. We're using the old mics. Uh, which is I what I was going to... We just... No, but I can't say, can you hear it? Can you hear it? Yeah, you go. Like that. It's like my first day. It's my first day. It's the first month of the show. Um, <sighs> sorry, guys. Uh, we're already crazy, as you can tell. But hopefully, it'll be entertaining. If nothing else, take nothing else but that, you know, if you if you don't want to, okay? So, uh, here I am. At, at my house, oh, uh, recording shit. this. I vaped on the mic. You can't stop. <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Um, I mean, the the I have a rope ready to hang myself with later. Um, can I tie the noose? Yes, you can tie the noose. Can Do you, you know when I was in school, I'm I taught to... everyone how to tie a noose? Yeah, I believe you. Yeah. I believe you. Okay. I got in so much trouble because it was a therapeutic day of school. Anyway, stop it. Sorry. I mean, give me a second here. Let me just do the so opening. So much trouble, guys. Let me guys. just do the opening. So much trouble. I already forgot everything Jay says in the opening. I already forgot everything. It's gone. Well, he talks about... um. Yeah, I know the candle and shit, but that's not until later. The candle is lit. Yeah, How lit is yet. it, Lexi? No, it's not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we actually have candles here that I can light. Yeah, right? We'll light it in it the It won't be a ruse this time. No, I... Shh. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you, man? Sorry, Jay. So we're not in the usual studio, so the sound quality is not up to up to snuff, to par, whatever they call it. But uh, it's just a way pretty good. I mean, I do my own show here when I care to, and I'll, I'll care about this one. Obviously, I'll take out all the um, sound stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, what? I'm what? I'm um, what? I'm what? He he talks about the website and the Patreon for yeah, about I, like I'm twenty not, minutes. I'm not. 
<laughs> I'm not there yet. He sent me all that information, by the way, through text. Yeah. Because I think he can only text. He can't even talk right now. That's right, how bad it is, folks. He is really sick right now. So uh, let's all give some karma kudos points, some good, fair, you know, well-being, you know, D- vibes. Good vibes. Good vibes, guys. Vibes? I was going to say there. Yeah, you were. You know, I talk my own way. I, I anyway, could tell. Yep. You know what? I'm going to slap you with this mic. Oh, Ooh. do you guys hear that, guys? Yeah. So if I go missing next week, you guys know why? Because I slapped you with a mic? Yeah. Wow. Anyway, yeah. anyway. Sounds like a threat. Send good vibes to Jay, for fuck's sake. Jason Knight. Hope you feel better, man. And hopefully this isn't as terrible as you can imagine. Uh, oh, all right. Can I know. you imagine what dude, he's thinking right now? Dude, I don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> and I don't know what he's thinking when but I said like this he's naturally show. stressed as dude, it is. I know. Oh, man. So, how we should just title oh, sh- sh- this? Um, the opening. Hold on. This this on. this show should be titled Title. "Sorry Jay." Sorry Jay. I'm gonna title it "Sorry Jay." He's gonna name it something else, though. Yeah. Um. Okay. Now, how can people reach us? Here is how. Tell me the ways. You know, it's like one of those. Never mind. I'll just tell you. Um. You can follow the show on Twitter and on Instagram at Chicago Ghost. Now, that's Chicago Ghost on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow uh, the um, the Supernatural Current Studies on YouTube, and that's the name for it. Uh, ring the bell. You know, it reminds you when we have new episodes up, uh, ready for you to download or watch on your watch list and stuff. Uh, for email, you can contact at Chicago Ghost Podcast. Uh, oh, Not Not. oh, wait, no. <coughs> I said that wrong. For email, you can do contact at ChicagoGhostPodcast.com. Uh, for a second, I had a reverse in my head. So, again, that's contact at ChicagoGhostPodcast.com. And you can call or text. Apparently, this is like some Arizona small town number. I think aliens visited this place. It's called... <gasps> aliens. The number is 872-529-0767. And since he's not here to correct me, that area code is indeed not Chicago. It is a small town in Arizona somewhere, okay? Again, that's 872-529-0767. Call or text us any goddamn time you want. Anytime. Right now, actually. Just do it right now. Just quickly give us a text. Say what do you want to say to us. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Just hi. But you got to, like, exaggerate the H. Like, with 2H. 2H. Hi. Oh, okay. Uh, poor Jay because I don't get these texts he does oh. um, <laughs> and one last thing here is that we're now and have been for a little while now on Patreon on patreon.com slash you know supernatural current studies podcast uh, well you know on the show there's a link you know and you just go there from there um, anyway find us there and we have uh, for our Patreon listeners, and we have few. We have several guys. We have several. Join the group. Make it bigger. Let's make it a township Squaddles. full of people just yearning for extra stuff. And the extra stuff, you know, primarily uh, includes uh, bonus episodes on a monthly basis that the regular feed never gets. And it's, let's face it, we'll we'll never get. You know, the most recent episode we did. Uh, you weren't there for this. But do you know what that was that you were supposed to be there for? The hat man. Yeah, that's right. Where was we, I? <laughs> you were, we were fighting. We were fighting? Yeah, I think so. No, I don't think that's why I didn't come, though. No, and that's not why you didn't come, but I came. That sounds really terrible. That's not why you didn't come. But uh, that's what she said. I know it's funny. Okay. No, but that came like right in the heels of that. Wait, did you mention that on the show that we were in a fight? No, no. I mentioned that you were sick or something. So you lied. Yeah, I lied. I'm not going to air our dirty laundry. The fuck? Thank you. Um, um, at least not without you there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it wasn't that. It was some. You were just fe- you were completely feeling out of it. You just didn't want to come. Oh you, yeah, you yeah. You really yeah. just wanted to stay home. You felt drained and stuff like that. Which oh, yeah, I think I did say that. Terrible day. I think I did say that. Yeah. On the show. I just don't no, remember. I remember that. So the Hat Man. So if you want to know what that was about or what that is, join our Patreon. You know, we have three levels on there. Just read it because I didn't memorize that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> But it's more fun this way. You know, it's more fun. A little flavor now and then. Jay will tell you better details later or just listen to the last show or the next show and he'll say it better. Um, so check us out there on everything to find out what we're up to on a daily basis, guys. Um, but obviously bi-weekly mainly. All right. So, Lexi. Yes. Are you okay? Have you been okay in the last two weeks? Am I okay? Yeah. Mentally, emotionally, physically. It, Pick one of them. It's broad spectrum, man. Pick one of them. Um, mentally, yeah, sure. Why not? Why are, not? Are we are we really ever okay though mentally? 
Um, um, I'm just saying, is anything going on with you? Anything uh, you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, a few things. I got promoted at my job. Oh, fuck. That's right. Congratulations. Thanks. What do you work at? You don't have to say this. Uh, the, Starbucks. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not that big of a deal, guys. I make coffee. Yeah. I do everyone else's job and get paid Whoa. like minimum wage for it. <laughs> <laughs> not that she's better about it. <laughs> I am not, no. Uh, What's the promotion? The promotion is to shift supervisors. And now I get to tell everyone else to do their jobs. Well, I also do their jobs because they aren't going to listen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so but, still, I'm doing everyone else's job. You're getting, getting paid, paid slightly more. I am getting paid slightly more, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Not a lot more, just slightly more. And it'll help pay for my scholarship. <laughs> Scott. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about that soon. Actually, that's part of our thing yeah. that we're doing this this, this week. But uh, that's go- that's great. Congratulations again. It just happened a couple of days ago, so yes. it's kind of new news. It was um. New there was news. a full psychological test that. <laughs> that happened. Yeah, with why don't it? you say that real quick? If you if you don't, I'm not without uh-huh. now. Don't give out names or details because in case you don't want to get in trouble. But like, I do not want to get in trouble. No, but just say roughly what it was. It was a giant psychological test. Basically, my boss had me do a bunch of everyone's job. Basically. All the all the hard work that like multiple people are supposed to do in a day, I did it all within like six hours without a break. By the way, I had one break, and then I was working for like six hours consistently without a break. And I know most of you guys are like, "Oh, well, that's normal. Welcome to adulthood." Oh, I'm not used to that. Okay, <laughs> right? If you're not used to it, that's a big deal. And I right. I only had one cup of coffee. I <laughs> I work at a freaking Starbucks, and I couldn't even make myself a drink because she was there. <laughs> and right, and it's like anti policy to drink on the floor, things yeah. like that. Yeah. So just just for background there. And then what happened? And then after doing everything imaginable, she came up to me, handed me paperwork. She's a like, good job, Lexi, you passed. And I looked at her with like the most like I don't even know how to describe my face. It was just like really, bitch. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I passed? You mean this was all a test? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make you feel all warm and fuzzy. No, it did not. No. I was very frustrated. Yeah, I can see that completely. Yeah, it sounds like it's a little, um, what's the word I'm thinking? Like, uh, pa- like patronizing in a way, maybe? Yeah. Or some form of, like, that feeling where, like, you know, you just... I was manipulated. It's man. not like it was for a good, I mean, had a good outcome, yes. but it's not for a good reason. It's like, you see that in a movie and it's fun, but when it's happening to you in real life... It sucks. Yeah, you know? it's not. So this fun. testing thing is maybe great in theory or on paper, but not amazing. In, if uh, any of you guys are boss in a retail store, please do not psychologically <laughs> test your um <laughs> your <laughs> your employees. Most of them will quit. Right, right. Um, yeah, but uh, I'm glad you made it regardless, you. and you're not like aching to quit or anything because no of, because but i was test. texting you a lot about wanting to quit i'm yeah, like I, I swear to god know, it, i'm yeah. doing all this getting paid minimum wage and i haven't even got like the paperwork for my promotion and then you get it yeah. i get it the same day which is very ironic yeah it's funny it's yeah. funny so i figured uh i do want you to mention that for sure for this um opening here so let's uh why don't why don't we uh why don't we cut it here for the intro and let's get into you know our show today would you like to do that are you ready for that? Thank you very much. Wow. Wow. Don't mention that song. Stop it with that song. Bent the whole world over. Wow. And said thank you very much. Uh, all right. Uh, stay with us, folks. All right, welcome back. Uh, thanks for listening to our sponsors. Uh, you know, go buy something from them, but not really if you want to. Whatever, He's do whatever you want. Wonderful. Are you singing? What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Um, when you did the five, four, three, two, it reminded me of I Curly, so I started singing the I Curly. This song. is the subject of today, guys. Anyway, let's just hold on. The <laughs> lights are turned down, goddamn low. Okay. The ceremonial. Hold on, hold on. The ceremonial. Mm-hmm. Ceremonial? Ceremonial. Thank you. Uh, candle is lit. Now, Lexi, how lit is that candle? It's lit as fuck, fam. <sighs> why do I do this? Why am I copying? I mean, Jay will love it, of course. That's why I'm doing it. So, did he say something else? The drinks are flowing. The no, drink- they were. They, no, now it's just crushed ice. Yeah, now it's just crushed ice. That isn't flavored, guys. No, it wasn't flavored crushed ice. You're no. Right. No. Just depressing. 
A little bit. Yeah. Uh, but we were drinking, and but it wasn't alcoholic. Um, I had lemonade with strawberries I drink alcohol with it. Jay, but I don't really drink a lot of alcohol with you, well, um, which is a good thing. I yeah. Guess. Right? That's a good thing. Yeah. Anyway, let's get the show going here. Now, the subject of today's uh, uh, show is actually here with me, live, on stage, um, you know, um, on the air. You know, I, I, even though I'm taking over for Jay as host, ultimately, the show is about you. Lexi Maven. Yes. Hello. Um, Greetings, fellow so travelers. So last year, around about a year ago, I made up an outline, a very just, uh, you know, just an outline based on my memory, just like a simple thing, you know, just like an idea, right? About what a, a bonus show, this is the original bonus show idea, how a bonus show of, uh, of, of looking into the mind of Lexi Raven, the mind in life, the times and trials. Of Lexi Raven, right? Because yes. you are becoming, um, and you have been since you you've been, you know, more part of this show lately than not. You're like the third the third wheel in a way, right? You're the you know you're the third host. I'm really good at that, guys. I've been a third wheel mind so like <laughs> I didn't mean it in a bad way. I just meant that you're there more often than not, right? You're part of the show yeah. more than like you know it's like it's irregular sometimes, but lately it's been more often. So like. Um, I made up this thing because you never had that introduction episode. I did Like, not, we did no. introduce you a long time ago. I don't know, whenever you first appeared. And guys, if you, uh, guys of the show, fans of the show, I mean, would know, maybe can go back and uh, remember those episodes and whatnot. I don't remember all the details. I didn't go back and listen. But you have come in and out here and there. Yes. And I noticed that you never, uh, never gave your own background. No. Of uh, what makes you you and what makes you... A worthy, I think a worthy, and Jay would agree with me, a worthy member of the Supernatural Current Studies podcast team. Uh, you are a worthy member. You have insights. Do I get a badge? No, oh. because I don't have a badge. So you're not getting one definitely before I do. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> Badge is in Seattle over here. Um, that's funny because that's where um, what? iCarly was themed at. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I didn't say that for your iCarly reference. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay that's i'm saying this for the audience i'm just playing it up <laughs> you know how i am so show me stuff uh okay um what was i saying anyway so you never had that and i figured that it's a shame that we uh don't have that for you so i was thinking you know it's one of those outlines like i said i made it i figured if we are we having trouble like coming up with a new idea or we want to take like a week off from doing crazy research that jay breaks his back reading and doing stuff uh, for us you know i figured like hey if you want like a week off we can do this i've already like you know prodded and know a lot about Lexi already i can like we can help each other get an episode out if you ever need it things like that and obviously we needed this time we didn't have an episode for you i don't have a researched pre-planned uh topic for you guys this this week i would have had it if i knew more in advance i would have done something uh, maybe something smaller on one incident or one event for you guys or something like that something that's Typically more bonusy. I would have done that too if I could have. But uh, alas, uh, this is the, the two days, twenty four hours actually before it's due, and we have to get something out there. So um, I figure, why not get into you, Lexi? Dig into my brain a little bit. A little bit. You are, know? are you sure you, you want to do that? Um, no, I mean I know I know what to expect. I know where the landmines are. Yeah. But um, even though our audience uh, don't know where the, those landmines are, it doesn't mean that uh, they will get blown up either. So because they don't actually know you. So they <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so they're gonna be. That's right. probably a good thing, guys. That's probably no, no. I'm, I'm no. kidding. We're all exaggerating here. It's fun times. So no, I'm a pretty um, normal human. Pretty normal. I mean, you're you have some you have some normal stuff. Yes. Qualities for sure, of course, everyone does. We're yes. all human, we're all complex, but I think you're unique in a lot of ways. Thank and you. you have a perception, your own percep- perspective, I mean, on uh, on the things we talk about that is that comes from a different place than Jay and myself, and yes. even Dave Odd and um, and um, Joe Erie, um, as well. We they, like you're closer to a Joe Erie type, I would say, yeah, as far as Except the background, like and what you less guys logic believe. though, because mine's just pure spiritual, right? Pure spiritual, but even yeah. but Joe Erie doesn't have much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. You both are similar in that same way, but uh, but even then, you two are still different, mm-hmm. different enough to you can tell them apart and their beliefs and whatnot and their system of beliefs. And I want to get I want to get some stuff with you because uh, you're you're learning at the same time. You're doing some stuff, and I'm just going to ask you a couple questions. And then hopefully discussions bloom from there. 
okay. we'll see where we're going. You know, so this is yeah. as my hosting duties because I know you don't know what's coming. Nope. Um, you read the outline, but mm-hmm. you actually don't know. I no, <laughs> and I'm very glad that you have it more structured than those little bullet points. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this was just like done like in five minutes. It wasn't like a real like. Oh yeah, I can't wait for next week's show. Yeah, it wasn't like that prepared yet. You know, so we're gonna we're gonna wing it a little here. Yeah, cool. we're gonna wing it here. Cool. So uh, I'm gonna start off with a question about this show for you. Okay. Uh, what attracts you to the Supernatural Current Studies podcast? Um, in well, general, or whatever you want to say. The supernatural mainly. Yeah. I, I'm not much on the the serial killer stuff, and that's why I'm usually not there for those episodes. Right, because you are sensitive to those things. Too sensitive. Yes, can't even watch like horror shows or anything um describe a little more about that because uh as i want to say real quick interject here with that comment mm-hmm. um she does get really affected with horror movies in a way that you wish you got affected with horror movies you know people out there who are like oh my god everything sucks out there nothing scares me anymore it does scare her and that's the reason she doesn't watch them yes <laughs> Which and is it weird. doesn't just scare me for a day it scares me for about a month and then so, a few months later, if I were to think about it, it yeah. would come back and scare me just the same. So hearing details about us talking about like, some victim out there getting killed this way or that way or this killer, you know, it, or this it, person's it, face yeah. as this or whatever stupid, crazy thing we said. Um, it's 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 too much, right? You, it is, sit there which and is a it. real bummer because it really fascinates me. Yeah. And I really like wish that one day I would be able to sit through and listen about serial killers. But yeah. Right now in my life, I cannot. So, in case you all were wondering, where is Lexi doing these episodes? That's why she's not there. Yes. So, so you were saying, what attracts you to the supernatural, right? Yeah. Um, ma- mainly in my past, um, having a lot of paranormal activity constantly surrounding me. Pretty much like a magnet for that type of stuff. Um, good, bad, all. I've experienced it. Um, and I don't know any logic behind it because my brain is... It it doesn't do logic that well, just as like spiritualism and stuff. And I like to see other people's experiences. I like to make sure I'm not crazy. And I just really like to know that um, that there's something more out there, and it's not just me who feels it. Uh, I would say that. Um, well, I know you, so yes. I don't think you're crazy. Thank you. I think very much that you're not crazy. I think you edged towards craziness yes but doesn't mean you're crazy but that was because of psychedelics <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying maybe in other ways too but uh yes. and just, i'm just being funny also but um you're not crazy and furthermore i do i do believe and i know actually for a fact actually that a lot of people believe similarly to you mm-hmm. or at least feel the same way about a lot of things in this world or in their own lives um again that's uh you're, you're tapping into a I mean, let's face it, you're you're considerably younger than Jay and myself, so yes. you are tapping into a sea of of thoughts and habits that we don't know, you yes. know, or that we haven't experienced as well as you have. Mm-hmm. So you are, in a way, our gateway to that. Cool. You know? And we, we don't use you that way. We should probably start doing yeah, that. Yeah, probably. In some way, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to use it. I'm sure, um, you know, maybe Jay can figure something out with that, but or, or an audience member can write us in you know a contact at Chicago whatever the fuck I said earlier <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I'm so bad at this sorry song. Jay <laughs> sorry Jay um, he's yelling at it right now on the screen like ah oh, into his phone um, yeah and if you have an idea about using uh, Lexi as that tool that generational tool but uh, that's uh, anything in particular about the SOS um, gave you like you know the warm feelings of like oh that's interesting or like oh my God, I was right about that, or anything like that that you feel about our show. You know, I really liked when you guys did more like outings for the Supernatural, like the, um, yeah, what was it called, the Bachelor's Grove? Yeah. The Cemetery, that one was really cool. Um, I liked when you guys like went out and actually interviewed like people on it and like got their stories and then like did a full on like test walk to see what you felt before asking for the rest of the story. Yeah. That stuff was cool. I really like that yeah. because it just proves that there's other like otherworldly stuff out there and people can feel it. And it's in like every home almost. So yeah. It's like every block has something. You know? Yeah. It's not like, there's a lot of history. Right. It's not just like some old city. We are or kind of school, all living right? on native grounds that yeah. we violently slaughtered. <laughs> yeah, we did. America. Um, America. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, and uh, obviously, I, I, this would be a good time to say, well, we, you know, we just can't leave days because it's so yeah. hard to 
schedule everyone and even for just jane myself like if we were to plan an outing we'd have to really plan in advance we can't do it on mm-hmm. the usual friday evenings when we record yeah it's hard it's hard to pull this off with uh, with life uh, is, yeah. with life being in the way uh, like we always like jane and i always dream that we want to do this as our main job mm-hmm. and uh, if we have to have a side job instead of having a main job meaning our lives out there and having the podcast as a side gig uh, obviously we don't see this as a side gig we want to make this full time uh, but until that day, can we we can't guarantee any of this kind of like kind of walk and talk stuff yeah. that we want to do. We want to do it. I mean that that's that's that shit sells itself. Uh, not that it has to be sold in any way, but that shit is so much much better. Like we don't have to always come up with uh, and research all this stuff. Not that it's not fun. It's fun, but it's hard. You know, everything's hard. So, yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard. Well, everything is work. So everything is work. That's right. Welcome that's right. to the human experience. <laughs> right. Um, didn't sign up for this when I came to this planet. So I think to talk about you, to talk about Lexi is to talk about her childhood. Yes. And um, and I don't, I'm, I know roughly whether or not to talk about some details of your life. I won't, yeah. I'll stay out of some of that stuff. Yeah. But I will we'll say... Leave some mystery. Yeah. Well, some also some of it's personal. And yes. I don't want to... I don't want to derail you or like, you know, showboat you or something like that. So uh, whatever the word is. And... Um, but I do want to talk about something in your childhood that is supernatural related, and it's actually related to our last, or most current, I should say, uh, bonus episode, The Hat Man. Mm. You weren't able to be in that episode like we established already. Now, can yeah. you tell us, and um, as briefly as you can, I guess, or as succinctly as you can, can you tell us what your experience with The Hat Man was uh, when you yes. were very young? Um, this is one of my first, like, earlier memories, and... Um, Around the time, like, when I had the Hatman experience, I was going through, like, a lot of trauma, so a lot of it is kind of blocked out, but it's something that I remember, like, so vividly, like, it happened just yesterday. Um, I remember the exact positions on where my mom was sitting, where my dad was sitting, where I was, when I felt eyes lingering on me from the outside of my kitchen window. And I was um, in between, like, we had this little doorway in between the living room and the kitchen. And I was walking through because I wanted some carrots, you know? Just a little, like, four-year-old me. You, just, you needed your, your, your fix. Yeah, your, exactly. Your carrot fix. My carrot fix. Your carrot uh, Ironically, as a kid, I hated all sweets. I only wanted fruits and vegetables. Very weird. But that was me. Um, so I went in to get some carrots and... The second I walked into the kitchen, the like complete atmosphere changed. I felt eyes like glaring on me and I was like almost afraid to look outside the window. But I did, obviously. I looked outside the window and I saw this man standing there, this very, very, very tall, thin man. Mm-hmm. And the more my eyes focused on him, the more I realized that he he was more of like a figure than a man. Like he was wearing this long trench coat, this long, it looked black trench coat, this, this hat. It yeah. wasn't like a top hat. It was kind of, would a fedora be the right word? Fedora has like the, the rim, right? It was like a rim. Yeah. But yeah. It wasn't super fancy. I right. think, I think it was a fedora. Yeah. It seems like the, the top three hats that people see with the hat. I mean, again, if you are a Patreon listener, you should hear the episode. If not, join our Patreon site and uh, find out what that episode is about. But typically, it's a cowboy hat, which is less likely. Top hat, which is what Jay sees mm. or Jay saw in his history, but usually is fedora. So you might. Yeah, have seen no, the I saw yeah. there was a fedora. Yeah, because it wasn't it wasn't a top hat at all. The rim was completely different. Um, so yeah, uh, I saw him staring at me. And as I focused my eyes more, I realized that he didn't really, like, have features. Mm -hmm. Like, he was just all, like, black. Like, the blackest, darkest night you could ever see, but into, like, a human, like, form. Mm -hmm. And it was very weird because the more I looked into, like, his figure the more I could make out like a, like a facial structure. Like there, there was a nose, there was um, eye sockets, no, no eyes, but there was eye sockets. There was like lips, like the shape of lips. There was mm-hmm. everything you would see. Like his nose was very like large, long, um, big. He had a rather big nose. Schnoz, huh? Yes. Schnoz city. Yes. Yeah. And he was just staring at me for a while. And like, a, like, are you talking about moments or minutes or what? For about minutes, yeah, yeah, because I I was afraid, but I felt it staring at me before I, like, fully walked into the kitchen, and that was about a minute before, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And then I walked into the kitchen. It took me about another minute to look out the window. Mm-hmm. And then when I looked out the window, it was like a weird staring contest because I was afraid to look away. And I, I don't know. He wasn't looking away. So eventually I did like turn away for a second because I was like trying to process, you know, I thought I was like asleep or something. So I like went to grab my carrots and I looked back outside the window and he was there and he was still staring. And then he, he looked down in his jacket and then he looked back at me and then he just walked away. Oh, he walked away, huh? He walked away. I watched him walk away. Uh, what time of day was this again? Remind me. It, it was nighttime for sure mm-hmm. because um, my dad was playing Grand Theft Auto and he only plays that at night. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. And, um, yeah. and uh, how old were you again? I, I was four. Um, it was about a month and a half before my dad died. Yeah. Yeah. And that goes really. Uh, that, I, don't know, I don't know if you want to talk about that, but yeah, that you're saying that that it, that was like a like a harbinger of that, something. When I read, that's what I um, that's what I read the most was um, that was like a harbinger of death. That it was coming to show like bad like family environments because my mom and dad were very abusive towards each other. It was just a very negative um household pretty much and i was constantly exposed to a lot of things like they were both into drugs and alcohol my mom's sober now but yeah they were into a lot of like bad things and there was little me yeah so i was just exposed to so much like negativity and darkness Mm -hmm. at such an early age yeah that i'm pretty sure that he was attracted to it the hat man yeah yeah and i know other demonic things because of all the negativity that's been surrounded, that's also probably why I have so many paranormal experiences. Mm-hmm. It's because of all the negativity and darkness that has just been lingering on me since like my early ages. Yes. Yeah. That's right. um, do you want to tap into any other? I know you've mentioned other stories before yes. here and there o- over the over the hundred and ninth episodes we've had so yeah. far of the show for three four years now. So um, I know there's a lot. Is there any other one that you want to mention in your childhood? Not, you don't have to be that young, mind you. Yeah. But uh, that you want to talk about or reiterate or there, like there highlight? There are a few that I remember okay. like, vividly yeah. like that. Awesome. We want to um, hear that. So. The one that probably like spooks me the most is like, it, it was, um, I think I was around like eight, eight or nine, maybe 10. It was around those ages. Um, I was in this little coach house and that coach house was very haunted. Like, it's probably the most haunted, like, house I've ever, like, lived in or experienced. Just paranormal things, right and left, all day, every day, um, constantly tormenting me, too. Like, it, the things wanted to be, like, known, pretty much. Um, and my grandma was in town, and there was a garage sale, and she decided to pick up a mirror. And if you guys know this, never, <laughs> never pick up mirrors from shady people, Okay just don't do it they're like portals or something like little gateways uh just don't pick up mirrors from shady people's in their garages um basically the second that mirror was in the house my like gut started turning it was a terrible like feeling inside me i felt like someone like like because i already knew the ghosts in the house the demons in the house or whatever it felt like something new and that something new was provoking all the other things this thing in the mirror was darker and every once in a while, uh, it was in my mom's room. So every time I would go into my mom's room, which is like my safety room, because I was afraid of everywhere else in the house when I was alone, you know, mm-hmm. because things would follow me. Things would pop up out of nowhere. I would hear laughter. I would see children running up and down the stairs that weren't there. All these weird, crazy experiences that totally scared me as a kid. Um, so, yeah, this mirror in my mom's room, I would whenever I would look in it, uh, the reflection inside the mirror would look completely different than the reality. Oh, okay. And there was uh, this little like stand like behind me, and as I was looking in the mirror, in the reflection of the stand, there was like a hand starting to come out of the the stand in the reflection and start to grab me. And I physically felt being touched, and I quickly turned around and I saw nothing, but I could feel a hand touching me. Mm-hmm. Still, so I looked back at the mirror and I saw a full body touching me, and it like crawled out of the mirror, like weird, like exorcist style, you know. Yeah. And I was terrified. I'm like, I need to get this mirror out of the house. 
I was afraid to break it because I thought that would make the thing escape, you know? Yeah. So I tried to protect that mirror as much as possible because we were constantly breaking things in the house. Mm -hmm. um, so I tried to protect the mirror but stay away from it. And there was this other time I looked in the mirror, same body I saw um, in the reflection, except as I looked closer, it kind of took my reflection. Like I wasn't seeing my face anymore. I was seeing this face. And it, I started bleeding like from the eyes and like just down my face. And it was the most terrifying terrifying experience ever and I, yeah i literally like eight-year-old me carried that huge body mirror out into the um alleyway and left it there yeah yeah was it taken at some point i'm sure it was yeah i refused to go in the alley did you get anything after that when you after not your... with that spirit no no okay that spirit was gone but it made the activity in the house a lot more active yeah. And it went back to normal. So it wasn't that. like in the mirror before that, but it just made the spirit that was already in the house activate more? Is that how no, you No, I think that it was a spirit inside the mirror. Oh, okay. Okay. That's how you did. Okay. Yeah. Because I've seen the spirits inside the house. Like, I. I think I we talked about that before yeah. about uh, like a child. Right? There was a child, yeah, a little girl. Yeah, I remember you mentioned that. Can you mention that one again? No, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. She lived downstairs in the playroom pretty much. We, have, we had these huge like walk in closets, but the more you went in, the more like narrow it went where you had to kind of crawl. It was a very weird scenario because it wasn't, it wasn't really like a closet, but it was, you know, mm -hmm. it was like a little crawl space closet. And she would live at the very, very end of it where you actually had to crawl. And I would see her every once in a while because it was my playroom, you know, all my toys were in there. All everything that I ever wanted to use was in there, a TV, toys, everything. So I was in there quite a lot as a kid. Um, and it was the only safe place. Because it was the only room with the door. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but this house didn't have any doors. Not even in the bathroom. So it was the only room with the door. Hmm. It, very weird. It was a very hmm. weird, broken down house. Yeah. It yeah. seems like it's, a, yeah. it's like the opposite of a fun house. Yeah. Death house or oh. scary house. Yes. Um, anyway. Yes. Um, so yeah, this little girl would come out every once in a while and um, telepathically she would communicate with me. Um, and I pretty much saw her with my third eye. There were a few times where I thought I saw her physically, like, cause I would see something move at, as I would see her. So I'm sure she made like enough energy to physically appear for me. But most of the time it was in my third eye, if that makes sense to you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would see her and she would tell me that she, she lived in the house and she was killed there. Um, that there was a family murder in the house and i tried everything i tried looking it up so many times but i couldn't find anything so i don't know right right maybe it was just on the land itself or maybe just like you need like some sort of like special database to yeah. find out murders or crimes that happen in a certain house or residence mm -hmm. maybe it's um i don't know yeah it could be a lot of reasons why you haven't found mm -hmm. it right. yeah so, yeah but um i would see the little girl a lot and she she wasn't mean or anything but she she was very nice she she would hang out with my toys and keep them safe. And I did not have a problem with her. Yeah, it was scary seeing another little girl in the house um, and knowing that there was a dead girl in my house. That really took a fancy towards me, too, because she would hang out on my bed also in the middle of the night when she was afraid. Hmm. Um, and she would show me around the house in the like exact spots where bad things happened to her. Yeah. Yeah. And it's weird because you could feel the energy shift as you walked into that spot. Hmm. That's crazy. I yeah. can see why you don't really watch horror movies. Yeah. <laughs> or I can see it more. I mean, yeah. uh, you mentioned the third eye. Uh, yes. What, what was, uh, how does that work? The third eye. It's like, um, you know when you like daydream? Mm -hmm. Like you see like little clip shows and images in your head? Kind of, yeah. I can see what you mean. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Like it's kind of like a little like clip show um, daydream in a way. Mm -hmm. But there's a difference for me because I'm able to tell if it's like a daydream or if it's something real because um thoughts would also come in. But I'm able to recognize my own thoughts and my own inner dialogue. Mm -hmm. And I know when it's not my own. Okay. I mean, I assume any, everyone would know when it's not their own, right? I mean, no, daydreaming, I mean, daydreaming yeah. is more, you have more control, way more control over than regular dreaming, right? You, you can, you say what goes in a daydream. Yeah. Right? Because you're, you're a conscious, you're awake. Yes. Right? So... You can have a daydream exactly how you want it, right? That's kind of the point of it. So, like, yeah. yeah. So, you can tell when it's not yours. Yeah. But <laughs> right? not many, like, the people, like, some people I've talked to don't, they don't know how to, like, 
um, separate their own inner dialogue from like telepathic messages and stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because it comes in as like a thought of your own, but you got to be conscious enough to know your own thoughts and um, inner dialogue to okay. know the difference. Yeah. And recognize the energy as the thoughts coming in. It's just really being like conscious and present in the moment to notice the energy, the the shift, all of that. Yeah. Um, it's funny because that brings me, I asked you because uh, I know that would bring me to a new topic and that is uh, this energy stuff. Mm-hmm. This energy work that you're doing. Yes. Can you want to, in any way you want to start, do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to start with uh, Reiki or like uh, chakras or like, uh, I know I've, Jay talks about your uh, chakra alignment yeah. all the time. Yeah. Or if you want to talk about your light working thing, anything you want to talk about there? Uh, Well, I mean, for a while I was doing energy work like unconsciously without even knowing I was doing energy work. What's energy work? What is energy work? Mm-hmm. Um... How do I explain it? Oh, try. Well, if you want, you could come back to that question later. I'm trying to find a way to explain it okay. without, like, with logic, pretty much. Because <laughs> most of my stuff doesn't really have logic to it. It's just intuition, gut feeling, and from my heart. Like, okay. m- my heart literally is my brain. Um, that's how, <laughs> yeah. Literally is my brain. Yes. Quoth. Quoth uh, <laughs> the raven. Uh, right? Exactly. Right. Um. Basically, energy work for me is because I'm I'm an empath. I'm able to be sensitive to like all the emotions and energies of people around me. I think um, energy is more than emotions, but the way I feel it and sense it is mainly emotions. Um, it's just yeah. I, I don't know how I explain energy work. Sorry, right. what's a light worker? What's light worker? Mm-hmm. What's a light worker? Yeah. Um, from my understanding, from my own personal experience, um, a light worker is a being of a higher consciousness, usually from a higher dimension that has reincarnated on earth during a specific time to help evolve the souls and, um, energy of the planet and people Mm -hmm. to help raise the vibration to get to that higher dimensional state that earth is currently in the transition of. Okay. That's what it is to me. All right. Because um, you, I mean, one of the things that you, uh, you you know, you brought in a lot, a lot of heavy things when we were dating or when we were first dating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, one of them was kind of with this kind of thing. Yeah. And you would tell it me It was about, when I was first discovering like my starseed or- origins though. Yes. And you yes. mentioned that on the show before. Yes. And you mentioned, you talked about your aura and how it's uh, specifically a shade that's that usually people have to work for to get. Yeah, but there, there are a lot of people like nowadays with this um, color aura. Yeah. The, the more um, the um, earth starts to enlighten, the more people are getting this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and we talked before, I don't remember which show, uh, Jay would know immediately again, but uh, recently, in a recent show, we talked about the age of Aquarius mm-hmm. being more prominent and right? yes. coming into light now. It's been, it's been, it's it's on, it's been on. Yes. And it's, it's a new age. It's been um, and planned this, and the yeah. light workers have been preparing for it for a very long time. Right. Like and we're if, literally here with the set goal and mission to help other people get to the age of Aquarius comfortably, safely, calmly. Yes. Right. Without losing their minds. Without losing our minds, yes. right. And um, one could say, that, you know, when you think of past lives and anything when you get into like some sort of some sort of philosophical or belief about dimensions and past lives and um, you know consciousness and uh, astral projecting you think of all these key words of mysticism right or a lot of people call magical stuff yes um it's i mean it's it, it is and it isn't and uh, all this stuff has been like kind of like it, it's 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 funny late in in our shows here it's been it's been coming up there yeah. oh, I'm gonna say Jay because I'm so used to talking to Jay sorry <laughs> it's been coming up Lexi where yeah. um like in the in the Hat Man it came up in a Native American interview I heard about the shadow people and he talks about all this stuff that we've touched on and other things like the mm-hmm. Mayan stuff and then the Mayan episodes we talk about that and then CERN you think of the dimensions that may have opened up and that mm-hmm. science it's uh, been around for a it's while. a lot of stuff yeah. going coming up with us uh, you know with this new with the latest generation with this new millennium we're in and um yeah I, i'm noticing the signs i'm noticing like things coming up here and there like they touch on other things yeah. the That's thing is it's always been here yeah. we're just broadening our conscious enough to become more aware of it mm-hmm. it's always been here like for me like talking about this stuff is just like 
it's so natural. Like I've been doing it since I was a kid. Like I just casually talked about reincarnation. I casually talked about other dimensions and planets, other planets and other solar systems. Mm -hmm. I casually talked about all these things that most people are like, what is wrong with you? Pretty much. Yeah, it seems to it seems to be like my world. Right. That's right, exactly right. Um, and some and you know it's funny because it seems like a lot of people are either they're stuck they're not stuck stuck might be a wrong wrong way to look at it because I definitely don't want those people to think I'm chastising right, their style. But um, it seems like a lot of people that don't believe anyway mm -hmm. or don't like what, what are you talking about with those people, right? Uh, I think they kind of just think of whatever the problems that the problems are in and on earth they don't think about they don't have they don't give themselves the time to no, go into but everyone's kind of also on a different level of consciousness yeah. right too like it might take them a few more lifetimes yeah or you know a lot of people are in several levels of distraction too yeah. from thinking that but that's kind of also thing, even in, if they um, would normally be broad minded that also goes with yeah. the levels of consciousness yeah but yes and no yeah. but also like you know a lot of like a lot of your stuff was forced upon you with, yes and no, yeah. Well, not forced upon you, but like it was, uh, it was done to you it, with the childhood stuff that you saw. Yeah, but it was also so it made it easier. Like it was my plan always when I came to this planet to remember very early on why mm. I came to this planet. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Talk about it. Yeah. Um, talk about my like my this, life this, prior to this being thing born. Yes, sure. Um, like I like to call it kind of like the in between. Um, mm -hmm. like. A past life and being reincarnated there's like this little space in between this little time in between that your spirit like sp uh spends time on to review what you learned in your past life um all this stuff pretty much it's planning your next life um planning what time you're gonna go into mm -hmm. um what age what planet pretty much all that stuff um basically um I, I do origin, like my origin soul does come from another like star system. And I was there like working with my star family um, on the evolution of humans into the next dimension, into the next level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And coming into this planet, um, it was agreed upon meeting you, which is uh, probably the most exciting thing that's happened in my life so far. Me meeting me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Explain that, I guess. <laughs> it's just um, that mean? it's one of our like relationships, twin flame or karmic. That's whatever right. Whatever we are. Yeah. I mean, I know what it is. I'm just asking you to yeah. talk, tell the audience. Yeah. <laughs> I um, know all the answers. I guess. There are divine relationships <laughs> in your life. Yeah. People that help you grow, evolve. Um, people who help you heal trauma that you didn't even know you had, and help you see the trauma you didn't even know you had mm -hmm. to further your um, spiritual evolution, stuff like that. Right. And um, on this, uh, I like to call it like the in-between life and death area. Um, when I was with my star family, the, the energy of them, <laughs> uh, we we planned uh, my existence here. And you, just, you planned this life that you're in right now. Yes. yes. I, I don't remember all of it, obviously. Um, but I do get like little, little snippets and like shide, uh, yeah, side <laughs> Slide shows. Is that how you pronounce Slide it? Slide shows. Slide shows. There we go. There you go. There, Verbal there. dyslexia, guys. That's it okay. happens. Yeah, it all happens. Um, Slide shows inside my head of being on this very specific, vibrant planet on the ship with these people or beings, I should say, um, mm -hmm. talking about Earth, hovering over Earth at several different points of time. Um, and when I dream, I believe that my spirit does go back to that ship because I, I go to that ship pretty much. I almost know it to be true. I like my soul goes up to that ship while I dream. I get information downloads. I like to call it. It's just like my next, like my next step in this life, like the next plan that I had made beyond going into this life, mm -hmm. um, being downloaded into my, my body pretty much what to expect next that's how i get like most of my like intuition and psychic uh, messages is like the more i'm awake during the day the more comes through from the dream downloads pretty much okay yeah if that makes any sense at all i mean i don't know how to explain right, it. right no it's hard like I, yeah. I, and i want you to talk about it in your own words <laughs> first before like me saying like obviously this sounds like very like 
I don't want to say it. It, it, it sounds like a lot. Yes, it is. Know? It is and a lot. I don't want to give us a, a, a term for it or anything. I don't want to name it anything because I don't. I, 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 everything you talk about when it, when you talk about this stuff, and you've told me many times this stuff. Yes. Um, I don't. You know, at first it was like, um, okay, weirdo, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. And um, and now I'm like, I'm I'm resolved to just say or to believe into like I'm I'm happy that you have this. Yes. And. I'm not aching to feel exactly how you feel because until I experience it, how do I know? Exactly, yeah. Right. And now, not to say that I've, I've experienced zero of everything you talk about here. Mm-hmm. I have. And more so since I met you, actually. Mm-hmm. And I've had some weird stuff happen to me, too, recently. And some of the stuff I don't mention on the show because it's so, it's so minute. I talk to you about it when it happens. Yeah. It's not, a, it's not a, a whole thing to talk about. Uh, you know, to, it's not a whole big to-do for me. But... Not to I say that coolest thing, I do get some whiffs of what you're talking yeah, about. The coolest yeah. thing that we both had was the remembering of a past life we shared together. Yeah. Yeah. A few of them, actually. Um, and that's how I knew. Do you, want, like, do you want to get into that? Uh, no, no, probably not. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's, that's Let's leave that for us. Yeah, I figured you would. Yeah. Uh, that's why I ask. Okay. Because um, I'm, I'm pretty much open book. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, well, that's that's super interesting, obviously. Um, you know, that, that whole thing you're talking about star child and star sea, star, star systems, is, all yes. the places you've been in and coming from. Uh, you talked about uh, the ship also. So let's get into oh, the topic yeah. of aliens. Okay. Obviously, for sure. you seem to be a, uh, a big believer in aliens, aren't you? Yes, I am. And um, um, I like to call them beings, though. Beings, just because for us, like for them, we're the aliens, you know. Well, that's how it works. I mean, yeah. like, uh, I mean, I do say aliens a lot to like the normies and stuff. Though it's like, do you believe in aliens? I'm an alien, guys. Yeah, it's yeah. a shorthand, and yeah. I don't think it's a, a bad. I don't like usually they word. say other dimensional beings or light beings, stuff like that. Right, know? there are light beings. There, are, there are there are beings that only exist in different dimensions, so they're mm-hmm. actually existing in the same space we're in, mm-hmm. but. They're in a different dimension, yep. so we don't see them, don't contact them, even even though we we can feel them sometimes. Yeah, though. we right, exactly. Yeah. Even though we do sometimes, that was what's uh. Uh, I do I do believe actually in all that. Yes. I think there are some some maybe less complicated or more complicated extensions of everything we talked about re- that, relating to that. Also goes back to my stuff. childhood. Yeah. is um, I was in a dark place. My vibration was very low, and I was in a denser um, dimension. Mm-hmm. That's why I was able to physically see and feel all these demonic presences is because I was in such a low density um, uh, dimension. Vibrational. Then. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk about vibrations. Vibrations. Okay. So you can explain to people. Okay. That I explain this so much. I don't know why I completely blanked now because everyone because I just talk about it so casually. They're like, "What the fuck is a dimension or what? What? What's a vibration? How? How do they relate?" Um, mm-hmm. To me, a vibration is like well, there's a few other like definitions of it, but for me, a vibration is like our energy in like a code in a way because everyone has a vibrational frequency based on their emotions, their thoughts, their feelings. Mm-hmm. And it all has a numerical code because the universe is a numerical code. It's math, you know? But that goes, like, way further into, like, my brain that I can't access right now for some I mean, reason. it's complicated to discern. Yes. Yes. It is. Um, I, like, I could see it in front of me, but I can't put it into words. I could, like, put it into a feeling, but not into words. To put it in a way that most people might understand, just to give an example here, mm-hmm. it's like seeing the matrix code. Yeah. Instead of the world that you see a pigeon, you see the matrix code of the pigeon. Yes. You don't see the pigeon. Yes. It's like that. Think of it like that, but like not precisely like that. Right? Yeah. Like all, all the senses kind of like mashed together too. Mm-hmm. Like when you look at a color, you could taste it, feel the te- like there's a texture to it. There's a number. Yeah, it's number like an with extra it. sensory experience. There's another yeah. term for that too, actually. I, I don't know that term, but and I've the, experienced that so much. I was just showing you True Detective. That guy mentions it in one of the conversations. That's also why I don't like the color yellow. It's my <laughs> least favorite texture and scent. <laughs> And scent. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's the scent? It's it's like um metallic bitter for me. Okay. And it it's this really like like grimy but also rough um texture. Yeah. Like I don't a, know how to explain. Like a paste. It. Kind of. Yeah. Chalky maybe or no no it's not chunky it's smooth but it's like grimy mm. and um thick. Okay. I don't know how Sounds to gross. It. Sounds yeah. gross. I don't like the color yellow, guys. I hate the color yellow. And I, I feel like um everyone's um everyone's senses are different. Like if anyone else can like 
I don't know, like taste a color or something, it would be different for every person. Yeah, definitely. Of course. Yeah. yeah. But for me, yellow, it's just, yellow and I just don't get along. Yeah. Well, yeah. staying on the vibrational conversation yes. part of this uh, show, um, <laughs> now you've, <laughs> in fights, you wouldn't even bring this up, but like, Jesus, Oscar, you have such low vibrations. Yeah, and in fight. It, right. It's also what like causes our fights sometimes, because I could tell when you're irritated before you even like say anything. When I first step in a car, I could tell you're having a bad dot bad day and I'm which a lot of people can't tell I yeah. think right yeah. I can tell when a customer when I work mm -hmm. at Starbucks too that's their um, vibration right it's you can tell I mean, like, I'm like oh just ask like a regular you okay they today create an auric field around them and it can mm -hmm. affect other people right if they don't know how to protect their own energy uh, I and other people might call like a sense a or sense, like you know yeah. them or intuition mm -hmm. well, you're saying what it really is is a vibrational like frequency that we're like tapping into yeah. right our hearts have auras and it expands out our body right Right. Yes. So I just want to say that real quick. And you have mentioned it in fights how low yes. mine is when, they, when it gets to be. Yes. But honestly, though, some of those times I think, I do believe you just said that to get at me. Because uh, I don't think it was that low. When, no, sometimes it is. Sometimes. No, no, I'm not saying it, yeah. it isn't other times. I'm saying, but I know that when you're mad at me, you can say a lot of things. Well, yeah, but when I'm mad at you, my vibration is also low. So my vibration plus your vibration equals a very, very, very low vibration where we're mm -hmm. both really angry. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, you talked about that, and that's interesting because the vibrational thing is the first thing, it's actually the first thing about you, uh, the first real thing, I should say, the mm -hmm. first big thing about you and everything you've told me over the years, and again, some of that stuff, the first time sounded insane to me, mm -hmm. um, and obviously that's, that's, that's stupid, but also, like, it's just how I felt. It's normal, though. It's normal behavior. But I didn't Usually you don't walk up to a complete stranger and be like, I see aliens. Yeah, but I don't want to go people. on, but I also talk to my, told myself, like, I don't want to go on. Uh, living or talking with this girl at the time when you when we were younger in our relationship, if I don't if I think she's crazy, I need to like understand her more and just try to right. If I'm gonna try to do this, yeah. like, be with you. I mean, uh, I I just told myself like shut the fuck up. Don't assume immediately that she's fucking off her rocker either. Mm -hmm. So like that's when I took steps. Anyway, uh, like I said, vibrational thing is the first thing that really like made sense to me, mm -hmm. and everything you talked about. Yeah. Um. Um. It's uh. It, it 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 makes it makes sense like it makes intuitive sense for me mm -hmm. and in a way logically speaking it kind of yes. makes sense too like the more I read up on it the more you see like when you just hear a uh, frequency of sound of sound mm -hmm. just pure sound frequencies and how it can tap and do all these amazing things and some of it horrifying things you you go from the whole CIA using sound to assassinate people across fields mm -hmm. to like how dog whistles work right I'm mm -hmm. not you know just simple examples that we know but there are so many other metaphysical almost magical in a sense uh, examples of vibrations you know being like able to vibrate a rock through a wall if you match the vibrations to the wall yep. you know things like that you know like oh, that's insane but that's it, it, we just don't have the tech for it but it can happen yep. and when you describe emotional vibrations like you just did uh, it made sense to me mm -hmm. so that's how that was like the gateway for opening myself up to you oh. back then well I'm glad to know yeah I didn't know any of that until right now well no I, I mean you just like it's not something you know in the moment it's something yeah. you know years later like what was the first like you know it's not yeah. in retrospect I can it makes sense what was the first thing yes that led me to Opening it up more for you, right? I also was smoking a lot of pot at the time. <laughs> don't so they I, all? I, I don't blame you for um, <laughs> thinking that I was crazy. Right, right. Or at least like, like or exaggerating or something. Yes. Right. Um, that's great. That's great, though. Uh, aliens, though. That's crazy. Aliens, yeah. Yeah. Um, aliens um, are definitely a thing I've always believed in since I was a kid. Yeah. And you know that about me. Yes. I just never, never knew all this stuff, obviously. Yeah. When we went to Area 51, that's when I got like a first real adult glance at something that's mm -hmm. definitely uh, unexplainable and, and fortified my beliefs in that. And I was like, well, I knew already, but it's good to see some evidence, right, for yeah. me, right? Um, but you've always felt that way? You've always, always, always since always. I was a kid, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any, At the time, I didn't know aliens. I just called them like light, pretty much light right. or spirits. Yeah. Because I would see them. Yeah. Like the specific aliens that was in like the in between with me and the aliens that I go visit in my dreams and stuff. Yeah. It's it's pretty much my family, um, like my soul family that isn't here on earth with me. Mm -hmm. They're they're there with me energetically. Yeah. Um so I want to talk about two things. One that relates to this and then one bigger other thing later. And that'll okay. be the rest of the show, I think. Um I wanna talk about 
a, an alien, not an alien encounter, I guess you could call it an alien encounter or an alien sight maybe okay. or something like that that you had while we were dating. I wasn't with you though. It was some evening and it relates to a group of people that are super toxic to you. Yes. And are relating to a group of people or mm-hmm. type of people mm-hmm. that is in general toxic to you, uh, bad for you. And it relates to some sort of witchery and whatever that means. Yeah. I want you to talk about it in your own words because I know it taps into a lot of other fields. Uh, which so. one specifically, though? Because there was remember a few. that one. Oh, was it more than one time? Yes, that you saw? there was. Yeah, I uh, don't think I told you all of them, though. So I so want to know which one. Wherever you want to go. No, no, no. Tell me the one that you're thinking of. Well, I don't remember the. I, I think you were with that girl um, and some other person. I don't remember who the other person was. And you saw them, and you, you like in the backyard or something. <gasps> I don't remember. Was it the the shape shift one? I, I don't remember. I just told me about that. You hey, that you were freaking out on the phone, telling me that you. So an alien with this girl, I forgot her name already. I don't know if you want to mention the name. Justine. Uh, Justine, yeah. Yeah. And um and all this stuff I'm like, oh fuck me, like it's crazy and I wasn't anywhere near you, so but uh yeah. So okay. Well wherever you want to start. There you start? there's a few with her because um of who she is. Um Yeah, so for a little bit of time there I, I had some pretty pretty bad friends. Um well not bad, but bad for me, uh energetically speaking. And, um, well, we would hang out a lot because she was the first person who kind of believed me when I said, like, stuff about aliens and energy. She was the first person who had experiences with aliens that I've met. So that's really what, like, drew me to her Mm -hmm. is, um... Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What I didn't know at the time, though, was her experiences with aliens were a lot darker and different than mine. Um... Her alien experiences were not the nice, friendly aliens that you would think of when I talk about them. They probably were not her family, if she does have a soul family of aliens. Um, they were probably really bad aliens. Um, so yeah, so this one time I was in a garage with her and her boyfriend, and we were just talking about aliens as usual, and... He just casually, hap- the boyfriend casually happened to mention that he was reptilian. And it was when I was first learning about reptilian. I'm like, oh, reptilians are bad. Like, all of them are bad. I'm terrified of reptilians. They, right. they run the, like, the government, the media, like all this stuff. You hear about reptilians, shapeshifters eating babies and shit. Yeah, if you Google, uh, a simple Google glance will show you all the stuff. Yeah, no, what? they're like the most like notorious aliens known to be on Earth. Because they basically control us all, or they try to control us all. They have failed now, by the way, guys. Um, yeah. Yeah, but they were controlling us for a very long time until, like, the age of Aquarius were upon us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyway, so I it took me a minute to, like, really process what he said. But as he said it, like, chills down my spine, I knew that he was, like, speaking truth. Energetically, at least. And then the more I were to look into their eyes the more i saw them shift their face shift the the slits the slits in the eyes that lizards have i used like i would see them blink like what is this called vertically uh yeah vertically right. they would blink vertically the more i like would focus hmm. um and things like electronics every time i would notice that and they would notice me notice that something weird in the room would happen like electronics would just stop working and that's how i knew it was true without me like just being crazy from being high that there was actual stuff around us like breaking down lights would flicker the energy of the room would completely change whenever i would notice and they know that i would notice it it was like the i am aware that you are aware that i am this type of thing yeah yeah yeah. but it was subconscious i think because they were just as freaked out that the lights were doing that as i was when i would notice it you know, mm-hmm. um, and with Justine, there was a few experiences with her. Um, that that was uh, her boyfriend. I don't think she was the same as him, but I think having him around for so long attracted like bad aliens. Mm. I'm, I'm trying to think of the story you told me though. We were at a park, right? I think so. I don't know, man. We did a lot of walks back then. We did, yeah. Um, Just don't mention one of them. Whatever you want. We did see a, a UFO. I'm trying to remember. I think I was um. It's probably was Nile still. You think or Morton Grove maybe? No, it was more towards her area. Yeah, was, like, okay. That one park that we would always hang out at. I don't remember. Yeah, it it was over by their house. Okay. Um. 
I remember the park, and I remember, I re- I remember what you're saying. I just, it's like almost wiped from my memory in a way. That's hazy. Yeah, very hazy. Okay. Anyway, well, I want to mention this thing because, uh, especially the group of people, this group, right? Because they yeah. were kind of bad. They were bad. They were um, really into Satanism, and they would collect my tears and blood in a vial. They um. How would they collect their vial? Your, your, your blood. Uh, I was I was high, and we were at a park doing a lot of activities. I would bleed. I would trip. I would fall. Okay. I would bleed, and whenever I did, they miraculously had a vial on them like they were waiting for me to injure myself they would just pull it out and be like oh some blood let me just grab my vial real fast Mm. yeah Yeah, so it was a really really weird trippy experience for me especially because i was i was high a lot of the time so i didn't really like ponder much on it i just wanted to keep getting high you know yeah but whenever i would sober up i would think back and i realized how like dangerously close i probably was to getting harmed a few times with these people Mm -hmm. because they they did talk about sacrifice and all this like weird stuff how i'm too like i'm pure light they would say that i'm too powerful that i'm pure light and then stuff about sacrifice and stuff then they were looking for someone with pure light Hmm. i was like okay (laughs) (laughs) and they would they would obsess over me in that way yeah like, what what was the point that that got you to stay away from them? Well, I, we we took a trip, um, to Wisconsin, mm-hmm. a camping trip, and basically we were all on acid, and they were talking about sacrificing again and playing a game and all this stuff, and they brought out a machete and a giant like hunter's knife and dug it into the ground and just kind of stared at me for a minute, and I. This was before the acid trip, okay, that I saw the machete. So I know the machete was real, okay? <laughs> and then we took the acid. And then they all decided to play like a hide-and-seek run away from the person with the machete game in the freaking wilderness. Like, there, we were in the middle of nowhere, okay? There was no towns or anywhere nearby, like nine walking distance, barely in driving distance. We were in bumblefuck. Yeah. And I was afraid because they wanted us all to play hide and seek while one of them chased us with a machete on acid. You could see how that could be like <laughs> awful, yeah, the worst yeah. Thing ever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can see that. And they they had they had speakers and microphones inside um inside little rocks and trees where they would play like bear noises and nature noises in in the wilderness, very weirdly. Okay. To trip us out. Okay. So they could hear us run. How many people are in this group right now um, in this story? One, two, three. I, I want to say around five. Okay. Around five. Five or six. Got it. Um, but it was mainly the girlfriend and the boyfriend, Justine and her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. They were like the initiators for everything. Everyone else was just a follower, pretty much. Yeah. Everyone else was like me, just a follower. Mm-hmm. They were like the leaders in a way. It, it, it was very like cult-like to me. It, it always felt So like did anything happen to you? I, I was chased with a machete for a while, and they talked about sacrificing me, and I thought I was going to be murdered. But they, 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 I'm glad they didn't do it. Yeah, but I'm glad what, either. What stopped them from doing it? Or, do you, or was it just... Honestly, I think I switched timelines. I, I mean, think I talked about this before. Um, because I was hiding for a while in the wood, woods, like alone in the dark at like 2, two or 3 a.m. Um, on acid, being chased by a couple of psychopaths with a machete that I thought were my best friends. Mm -hmm. Um, And, like, just uh, their mom was on the trip. Like, there was family, like, in a cabin, like, 20, 30 feet back. And I I saw one of them at the campfire. And there was no one else, like, in sight. Everyone was, like, deep in the wilderness. I happened to find my way back to, like, I don't know, human population in a way. Like, one human. But I, I thought she was safe enough, you know. I mean, she was also on acid, and she was, like, tripping balls, but she wasn't <laughs> part of the game. <laughs> Everyone in Wisconsin Woods is fucking tripping balls. Yep. Yeah. No, no. I know that for a fact. I know I have a, a Polish friends who go there all the time, mm-hmm. like, a couple times a year. Um, and, I was, and I think Connie comes up to Wisconsin, too. Yeah. Um, and they all get drunk and high all the time. That's all yeah. they do, all night, all day. Yeah. Yep. So that's very, so, very common. <laughs> um, I kind of, like, hide, like... I kind of hide kind of in like plain sight. Like I don't approach the campfire because then I would be spotted pretty easily, but I go where there's light so I could see around me. 
and I, I kind of just like I think really hard to escape this reality and go to somewhere safer. Yeah. And that's pretty much what happened because before I knew it, everyone was like, I was doing this for a while. I was just focused, so focused on switching because I honestly like felt I was seconds away be- from being found and murdered. Like I saw like the glimpses in my head of me actually getting murdered after the fact. So I'll get to that in a second. So I was thinking really hard, like, get me out of this timeline, get me out of this timeline, get me out of this reality, get me out of this reality. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then the next thing I know, everyone's sitting by the campfire, no machete. Machete's gone. Pretty sure they put it away, packed it up, whatever, because it was still like on the trip, but it was like in the trunk or something. And Mm -hmm. I don't know how it got to the trunk, Mm -hmm. but they were all by the campfire when I look back because I wasn't staring at the campfire the entire time. I was closing my eyes. I was like praying pretty yeah. much. I look back. They were all just sitting there casually smoking a blunt. So I walk back and they did mention a game, but they didn't mention the chasing, the running, the machete, anything. And I didn't want to bring it up, you know, because mm. that like really traumatized me. And like the sun was rising at this point. So we all kind of watched the sunrise. And the weirdest, weirdest, weirdest part about all of this is I think justine knew because she said you did it and then she mentioned something about a timeline do you remember what she said about the timeline or just something um, easy or s- something about switching timelines i don't remember the full sentence but i think she was aware that i switched timelines because her and i have switched timelines before hmm. like in other like weird trippy experiences um We've seen some shit together. Yeah, we talked about this on a mass scale with the Mandela effect, how people yeah. have switched timelines and the ones that are left behind, they remember different things. Yeah. Talked about this in many different other examples too where I felt like I've done that. Uh, I don't think on the show though for that reason, but for other things in our show with supernatural events, we've mentioned this kind of possibility. Mm-hmm. So I'm just putting it in terms of yeah. what our audience would understand. Her and I um, had our own timeline switch and we had a full group of people to confirm with us Mm-hmm. Because they had completely different memories of what happened seconds before yeah. when we switched timelines. <laughs> but yeah, so she she mentioned it. Like she knew that's what happened. But even then, I was like, I can't be friends with these people. Yeah. I don't ever want to go to that vibration again. What if I go low enough in that vibration where I go back to that timeline? What happens then? Right. Might, so I yeah. isolated myself for months and worked so hard to raise my vibration from where it was. I got sober. Uh, I haven't really touched weed since um, or acid. <laughs> and um, I've just been working on keeping my vibration higher than that point in my life. Yes. Because I remember getting murdered, even though I wasn't murdered, if yeah. that makes sense. I know. I know yeah. Like being so close to being murdered, like you could see it Yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So yeah. If someone says that they want to play a game in the woods on acid at two AM and they happen to have a machete or hunter's knife, don't play the game. <laughs> that's the lesson. <laughs> if take nothing else, it's not that. Or take whatever, right? Yeah. Or with, with, Just don't go on stuff. camping trips in the right. middle of Bumblefuck nowhere. People s- when people say they want to sacrifice you and they collect your tears and blood and vials. Yeah. Don't do it, people. Yeah. Don't live by my mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, well, you came close, but yes. I'm glad that nothing happened to you, obviously, because you're here. Um, all right. So one more thing. Let's get into a more positive, more recent, pres- more present time stuff. And that's uh, t- two things, but I think it's more than two things. Um, I want to talk about uh, what you've been doing with uh, Reiki and Shiatsu. Okay. Um, so I came to this point in my life where I realized I don't want to work a retail job forever. And that I have a gift and I wanted to do something with it and add logic into my gift so that I could explain it to like normal people, you know, and make money doing what I love, which is energy work, which is spiritualism, stuff like that, you know. And make a living on it. Yeah, Yeah, make a living. So I looked up like Reiki and stuff and I've always been interested in massage therapy too. Um, But I've always wanted to add like a spin on it, like an energetical spin on it. Mm -hmm. which is why I took the Reiki classes first, was to learn how to do that. Um, I only took Reiki Level 1, Reiki Level 2s in a month or two, but it is uh, quite pricey, for me at least. Yeah. Um, 
Well, with a new promotion, maybe it won't be so bad. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. I'm still going to do it. Yeah, yeah. I'll just probably be broke for the rest of my for paycheck that, week. For that week, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Reiki. I, I took a Reiki class over in this place in Evanston. Mm-hmm. It's called Zen. Evanston is a suburb of Chicago. Yes. So, FYI. It's uh, called Zen Shiatsu, and it's actually where I'm taking school now for Zen Shiatsu, but they also do Reiki classes every couple months. Yeah. Um, She's opening her little workbook. I am, yeah. From our first class. Yes, from my Reiki class. I'm trying to, like, find... Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, just, a definition of I definitely Reiki. don't want like a, a lesson in it. I just want you to kind of briefly talk about it and explain. Like, see, because I want you to talk all that background stuff because it makes it makes a lot of sense that you would try to seek this out in this way. Yes, yeah, exactly. Like you know, like what kind of person? What kind of person can there be when it comes to like Reiki masters or or, or shiatsu practitioners? Right. Yes. Um, anyway. So basically, what Reiki is is. Um, energy work to help heal the body like to help your body get its like energy back to help the body heal itself pretty much so you aren't physically healing the body you're just waking up the body to rem- like remind it how to heal itself mm-hmm. that's pretty much how energy works okay. like energy work works like you don't ever like put your hand on someone they're instantly like cured of a broken leg or anything no you just kind of wake up those cells with your energy their energy working doing its bodily function things and this is the kind of thing that's in hospitals too yeah no they're they're in hospitals now they're becoming a lot more mainstream in hospitals they're in a lot of hospitals now which i find amazing uh works really well with um cancer patients uh when they go through um radiation radiation yeah because Mm -hmm. it helps relax therapy i mean Yeah, yeah radiation too yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's what oh. it is. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, because it helps relax the body into that natural healing state, mm-hmm. which would help um, succeed the radiation. Right. Take out the cancer cells. Yes. Right, and so on. Right. Yeah. And keep the radiation cells obviously not from harming good cells. Yeah. Or healthy cells. Yeah. Yeah. That's essentially what it is. Yeah. I read up on this too. It's interesting how it's it's becoming exactly what you said more mainstream, and it's it's really very cool to to it's eye opening to see that it's yeah. uh, more embraced. Yeah, uh, in the medical community. I mean, you may always think of medicine as science, and mm-hmm. you never think of science and this kind of thing together before. Exactly. A generation ago, 10 years ago, would you say? No. no. I mean, or 20 or whatever. No, they would. Like, it's not as common, probably but it's burn coming out. It's great. It's great. Uh, yeah. And then shiatsu, it's uh, more of a recent thing that you do. Yes. It's, um, it, shiatsu means uh, Japanese finger pressure, pretty much. Mm-hmm. I'm in just the beginner's class right now, so I don't have the full definition for you guys, but it's it's finger pressure mixed with your energy work, mixed with their energy um, mm-hmm. to do the same thing, like to help relax the body into that natural healing state. And it's, it's like massage school, pretty much. Uh, it's like finger acupuncture, Japanese, Chinese medicine style. And it's really fascinating, really, really cool. And I got a scholarship. Because I'm just that awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. No, I, I think it's because um, for so long I, I was kind of lost on my path trying to figure out what I wanted to do career, career-wise. Co- co- career-wise. Yes. Verbal dyslexia again. Starts um, again. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's a quite common thing for me. So basically, when I got to that school and when I like halfway through the beginner's class, I was offered the scholarship. Just because, like, the energy of it just came so naturally to me. And the, the teachers were starting to notice that. That, like, I I knew just a lot it. of... Yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was getting it, like, intuitively. Like, uh, I knew a lot of the spiritual stuff they were talking about. But I've never really been connected with the human world or the human body, which I explained during, like, the intro class. Um, and I feel like they just made such a connection with me that they wanted to help me connect with my body to connect with other human bodies to connect with this world to help heal Mm -hmm. to do my life's purpose and part of my life's purpose is to know how humans work and how the human body works yeah yeah so they offered me a scholarship and i'm slowly learning about humans and the human Uh, body humans humans yes yes i am human technically yeah i know what you meant (laughs) just the way you said it yes yeah, congratulations! You're doing class, a weekly class. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's going to be bi-weekly very shortly because um I'm taking the full course now, 
And it's a two year thing, bi weekly. Bi weekly, you mean you mean two times a week? Yes. That's not bi weekly. Bi weekly oh. is once every two weeks. Oh. But uh, uh tri weekly? No, I don't know. Just two times a week. I don't two know. Two times a week, okay. Yeah. <laughs> weekly squared. Weekly squared. That's good. Yes. I don't I'm sure there's a term for it, but I'm pretty sure yeah, but that's not how anyway, whatever. It's all good. Okay. Uh, um, okay. Before now, we're, we're at the end now. But congratulations on all that. But it makes sense the the the, the path of what you're going through. Right? Yeah, I'm saying it makes sense. Um, and I'm glad you're, you're still here. Glad no more hunting trips. Yes. No, um, probably will never go camping like that again. If there's one one final thing you want to talk about um, in relation to your own experiences, uh, to our audience out there, maybe. Maybe specifically people who are feeling similarly to what you're feeling. Anything you want to say before we end the show? Um, listen to your heart more. Um, try to not let your brain interfere and your heart will tell you things and show you things that that just resonate with you, you know? Like, that will it will show you a new light to your life. Um, if you are just beginning on the path of enlightenment, um, it, it it may seem hard in the beginning, but it, it is totally like worth it. You know, like just the the connection you get with like yourself, your own spirit, along with like everyone in the world, like nature too. It's an amazing experience, and I really hope that all of humanity uh, connects like this one day. I hope so too. Yes, I hope so too. That's great. All right, guys. So that'll be the end of the show thanks for listening um so oscar take yourself home You don't know Framulon? No, should I? I mean, talk into the mic you can... Hello, hello, hello. What, it, what did you say? I don't know that word. Framulon. Should I? We were just... Framulon. Should I? So we sound like... Then I'll plan. Lisa needs braces. I don't know what you're saying to me, and I'm really confused. I know you would be, because you don't know those things that I'm saying. No. Fremulon is, we're just watching The Good Place. At the end of it, they say Fremulon. That's the name of the production companies or whatever. Oh. That's what I got it from. I was just quoting that. Oh. That's it. That's the whole mystery. Nothing. It doesn't mean anything. No, it was not meaningful. And in fact, it was uh, information I wish I never learned, because now it's stuck in my brain, and it's completely useless. Fremulon. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so uh, 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 How nervous are you? Are you nervous? I'm very nervous Yes Is it because we're talking about you? Yeah Okay And I don't like Have all my research Or anything and Oh I mean I have those uh, Things over here Do you want them? What things? Uh, that thing you know, That notebook That notebook uh, That folder you left uh, Yeah for the Reiki I might need that Yeah yeah I mean we're gonna do Just the intro first As always And then when, And then I'll cut it right Like usual Like I said and, um, Cut it And then uh when we come back, you can just review that stuff if you want. Okay. Okay. But uh, you're nervous because you don't have all the information, you don't think? Yeah, no. I mean, you know about your life, though. Yeah, I do. I mean, it's mainly stuff about you. Yeah, it is. Right? Think of it yeah. like a think of it like a, like a bio, right? Yeah. Like uh, if you were officially, or I don't know how official you are right now, but it feels to me like part of the team kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like you're there. I'm, I'm a part of a team? Yeah, I Man, mean, I've been waiting my whole life to be a part of a team. Well, every time I, I, I may have overstepped, get... uh, oh. Jay. I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. <laughs> you're pretty good. You're part of it. He I'm... said it before to your face. I know that warmed my heart. Okay, good. Testing your audio, bro. Okay, is my audio tested? Pretty good. Hey, you want to see that Sonic movie? No. I, I heard. I heard it was actually good. You really want to watch that Sonic movie, well, or are you trying to fuck with me? Uh, well, I don't think you actually want to see it. I want to see it, kind of. You do? Kind of. 
Just like, mm. you know, I'm, I'm just kind of. Not like not um, like I'm dying to see it or anything. I'm dying not to see it, though. See, see, I'm not see. I, yeah, that's the thing is that I don't have this hate for it. Um, it just, oh, no. I just don't have this the hate for it, say, that you, that you kind of have. Already. I don't have a hate for it. Well, you really don't want to. I, so, no, I do not. For example, like for me, it's more like a 50-50. Like if I see it, okay. If I don't see it, okay also. Hit or miss? Yeah. I bet they never oh, miss, huh? Me. Just say the next line. You got a boyfriend. I bet he doesn't kiss you. Yeah, when they rhyme the same word with the, another of the same word at the end of the next sentence, that's good rhyming. That's good rapping right there. Or that's good singing, right? No, it's, no, it's not. not. I know it's but it's catchy. And your face is catchy. I know. Not in the way you think. Oh. It's catching all the... Ebola. Yes. All the coronaviruses. <gasps> Oh, oh, babe, shit. I have something hysterical to tell you. Oh, please tell me. Now you don't want to say it? We're on mic. I won't include it in if you don't want me to. Okay, yeah, huh. no, okay. So, watch that much TV. He's like, it's true, though. It's happening. It's in the U.S. I have stocked up water. And she's like, you've had stocked up water. He's like, I got more. I got more food, too. The basement's packed with food. We're not going to leave the house. And then... Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds insane. He is insane, yeah. There have been so many... Uh, that's why he collected so many swords. Hmm? Like, I'm not even joking. He went pricing on bow and arrows for a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Same with the Ebola thing. Same with... Uh, twenty, Especially 2012. 2012 was the worst one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, if you want, I can still put it in there and cut out all those names. And, you know, the personal Just, mentions, if you want. Well, I mean, it's part of my life, yeah. It is part of your life. That's why yeah. I was kind of. That's kind of interesting. It, it's interesting because it, it was around the time like all the. I heard all these conspiracies, but I only heard the dark side, like the stuff that you talk about on the show, yeah. like the dramatic things that people do when they hear these conspiracies. Yeah, he does all of that. He's one of those people. Nice. Like he almost. I'm not nice, but you know. No, it's not. It's actually quite horrifying living with someone like that. Mm-hmm. Especially with the 2012 one, he was like ready to end all of us because it's better us for us to die in our own terms and to die from the world ending in some mysterious way. Yeah. Huh. And we were kids, so he was feeding it into all of us that we were all going to die. Yeah. Yeah. You never went pee, Uncle Pina, then? I know. Yeah. Oh, my God. What did you say? Thank you very much. <sighs> You ready? I am. I need you to put that phone away. Slash, stop it. Mm. Slash, slashing. I can't stop. Yes, you can. Stop playing? Yeah, yeah. you can. No. <laughs> away, away. What is this? It is away. Where's the button? The, the, it doesn't have a button. It's forever on. That's why my phone's always dead. No. <laughs> you don't need your... No. You're the focus here. You're not in background anymore. You're not the third wheel. You're the main wheel. Wait. That means that I can't play games on my phone? No, that means you have to focus. And not play games on my phone? Right. Okay. Just do this for the show. Jay will appreciate it. Thank you, Jay, for you appreciating. Go. Not just me, because I know you don't give a shit whether or not I appreciate it, <laughs> but Jay will appreciate it. I appreciate the things that you appreciate. So well, thanks. not when I ask. So Yeah, no, not when you ask. <laughs> we'll like see. later on. See what I mean? Already. Already. It's it's happening. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's do this in five, four, three, two.